The next question comes from someone I don't know. Yep. Uh, no, <laughs> I don't have a name. But yep. they ask, do you have to be feeling a specific emotion when you are processing emotions? <laughs> yeah, this question is so funny. I've had it so many times in our seminars. Um, yes, of course, <laughs> you have to be experiencing or feeling an emotion if you're ever going to process through your emotions. Uh, and say, so, yes, it's impossible to process through any emotion if you're not feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I find the question so funny in a way because it indicates how distant people are from, the, from their emotions. They, they sort of think that processing emotion is some sort of intellectual thing, yeah. even. Yeah. No, it's not going to be any intellectual thing. It's going to be focused on feeling and experiencing the actual emotions. Mm -hmm. So, so you cannot expect to be nice and quiet and calm while you're processing an emotion. It's not like that. And it never will be like that. Yeah. Uh, there is going to be pain and suffering in the process of feeling and experiencing these emotions because most of these emotions are error-based emotions that need to come out of you. And as a result, all error causes pain. So all error is going to, so this error as it comes out of you is going to feel painful. And you're going to have to, at some point, be a, allow yourself to feel pain, mm -hmm. emotionally mm -hmm. pain, and physically pain as well. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to allow yourself to feel the physical pain in your body. You're going to have to allow yourself to feel the emotional pain that you have, and allow yourself to go through the experience of it, not just the acknowledgement of it. Mm. You know, a lot of these new age people go, oh, as long as I acknowledge the emotion, then it all goes away. No, it doesn't. It doesn't go away, it's still in your soul and it will remain locked up in your soul until you experience it. And, and the reason why it's locked up in your soul is because you've got other emotions on top of it that you firstly will need to feel before you can feel the causal emotion, the actual one that will heal you. You'll have to feel all the blocking emotions that you also have, all the things that happen to you to shut you down from experiencing your emotion. And so people who ask this question are usually very shut down emotionally. Mm -hmm. And so much so that they have no understanding of what it means to actually feel an emotion. Mm. Otherwise, they would never ask the question. Yeah. Do you think we always know what the emotion, like... No. What the emotion is Definitely when we're not. feeling it? No. Definitely not. We, might, we can't na necessarily name it or where it comes from, but we are experiencing it. Yes, and, and it doesn't matter about naming where it comes from. Mm. It doesn't matter. And this is something that everyone wants to do. And it's crazy to want to do it if you think about it, because some of the emotions will have entered you before, from the age, from the time you were um, conceived, through to the age of say three or four, when you didn't have a developed intellect and you have very little recorded memory of that of those events generally, mm -hmm. because they are often shut down emotionally. So, so because of these things, as you go through the emotion, you'll just be feeling an emotion. Now you might become acknowledging about it afterwards yeah. but if you're acknowledging it through it it's not you acknowledging it's just you've just got a spirit talking in your ear telling you what the emotion's all about yeah. and honestly it doesn't help you it doesn't help you what you need to do to fully experience the emotion is to stay in the emotion for as long as it's there mm -hmm. and that requires again the exercise of your will and it doesn't matter what you intellectually believe it to be about and you've got to give up the idea that it's actually about thing you know something Causal emotion will often, you'll find out about it only after you've processed it as to what it was about. Yeah. Now, there are groups of emotions that we manufacture. Mm -hmm. Now, these emotions are all useless to feel. Now, these kind of emotions are the kind of emotions that people experience quite frequently, which are things like rebellion, you know, anger, tantrums, yeah. crying because somebody didn't give you what th you wanted, yeah. which, is a, which is out of harmony with love, yeah. and so forth. A lot of those kind of emotions are all useless emotions to actually feel because you're manufacturing them. They are not anything to do with reality or truth. They are only what you want to believe you should feel. Mm -hmm. And most people I know go through those emotions. And they, that's why, you know, a year later, nothing has changed because they're not looking at the issue of love in their emotions. Yes. So it's not just about processing emotions, it's about looking at how love and truth affects the emotion. 
If you're crying because somebody didn't give you something, you're not in harmony with love. So there's a deeper issue. Mm -hmm. There's a deeper emotional issue that you're not crying about yet that you'll need to find, right? And the crying about somebody not giving you what you want is all just a facade, a, a self-delusion to help you avoid what is the real pain inside of you. Yeah. And people do this frequently. So we can't assume that just because someone's even feeling emotion that they're actually processing through causal emotions because yeah. they quite often are not. Mm -hmm. And in fact, frequently are not. And they are doing the substitute emotions because they are more palatable to them to experience than the actual causal emotional pain is. Yeah. So they're using substitute emotions to avoid the causal emotional pain. Yeah. yeah. Whenever we're releasing a causal emotion, uh, I often feel there's a truthfulness about what, from God's perspective, about what's occurred as, like it has to be done in that context. Like for example, if I'm crying about feeling low self-worth, um, but in fact, I, f I feel bad because other people have treated me bad. When I really get to my causal emotion, I'll be crying about the fact that other people treated me bad and it hurt. Correct. So, so this whole concept of low self-worth, for example, is not often the causal emotion. It's mm -hmm. an effect of the cause. Yep. The cause is being attacked during your childhood and being made to feel that you have no worth yeah. and having a lot of pain about that inside of you once you release and fear about that inside of you. Mm -hmm. Once you release that fear, pain and shame related to those events, then you'll no longer have a low self-worth. Yeah. And also you'll be able to feel and experience God's love. And so you know you have worth because yeah. the biggest person in the universe loves you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you can feel it. Yeah. And conversely, sometimes I see people crying because they feel they've been treated badly and it's all about mummy and daddy treating them badly, when in fact uh, they've actually gotten a lot of what they wanted in their childhood, which bred an expectation that Correct. they should. And what the truthful, the truthful situation from God's perspective is that they have unloving demands and expectations. Correct. And that's what they need to deal with. Correct. And so there always has to be an element of truthfulness, doesn't there? Of or, course. Or, or, not an element. There must has be, to be a truthful... Uh, it comes through the process of emotions, doesn't it? But if well, well, initially, maybe not. You know, yeah. A lot of times what we do first, and what I've noticed a lot of people who hear divine truth, what they do first is they process through all of these emotions mm -hmm. that actually are all self-delusions. Yeah. And then you tell them they haven't made any progress at all. And that's when they process their first real emotion, which is <laughs> anger. <laughs> because they're angry that the last year of their life was wasted time because they thought they were processing things that they never processed. <laughs> and when you say they're processing, then they're not really processing because we talked in our previous session about anger not being that kind of anger. Correct. It's not a, it's real, not a real process. process. But they're at least more honest with what's in their Correct. soul. Correct. Yeah. And, and they start to see their own they can start to see the fact that they haven't begun, mm -hmm. which is actually helpful. Yes. Yeah, but most people never make it beyond that point, <laughs> usually on the divine love path, particularly on Earth. You know, there are so many of our friends in the first century who heard the divine truth for many years, didn't make an ounce of progress the entire time they are alive on Earth yeah. until they r arrived in the spirit world in the hells and then realised the imperative of being coming more sincere about their <laughs> feeling of their emotions. Yeah. And this is, the, this is the issue that most people on earth face now, is that unless we're more sincere about the feeling of our emotions and we're actually doing it in harmony with love, ethics and truth, then, then we'll be selecting emotions all the time that actually have no bearing whatsoever on the truth at all. So, so if yeah. maybe if I give an example of that, an example that you've already raised, and that is this example of, Let's say I, I feel you don't love me. Well, the reality from God's perspective is that you don't have to love me. So if I'm crying about you not loving me, then I'm not crying about a causal emotional issue. Mm -hmm. I'm crying about an effect. Mm -hmm. There's something inside of me that has an expectation that you have to love me, mm -hmm. even though God's truth is that you don't. So the fact that I'm actually now crying about somebody not loving me is an indication that I'm already out of harmony with God's truth on that issue. Mm -hmm. Now, God's truth on the issue is that I am loved by God, even if I'm loved by no one else. 
Now, if I don't feel that and I need somebody else to love me, then I'm in an addiction with that person, mm -hmm. right? Now, I can cry about that addiction not being met, but I'm not going to make any progress, yeah. not on the divine love path and not even on the natural love path mm -hmm. because the reality is I have a demand upon the other person, you, that you love me. And that demand in itself is out of harmony with love. Yeah. So what I would need to do is feel about why I have that demand mm -hmm. and why it is that I feel so sad when I'm not loved. Mm -hmm. And that is all about the internal sense of worth that I have. If I actually loved myself and, and, and therefore was supplying all the love that I needed for myself to myself, then I wouldn't need another person to love me, actually. Yeah. And that, you know, that's more in harmony with God's truth. Yeah, and this is where I start to get really passionate about the topic of humility. Mm -hmm. Because humi humility is a willingness to feel our emotions, but it's also a willingness to receive the truth. The truth. And so yep. what you're just explaining there, I mean, in order to process fully, we have to be open to willing, uh, we have to be willing to feel our emotions, but also open to understanding the truth in relation to those emotions. Correct. And, and that's what I see most people not doing. Yeah. Most people have no desire to find out the truth about why they feel what they feel. Yes. So, for example, if I am a crying about you not loving me, and so then somebody came along and said to me, actually, you're the one out of harmony with love. I'd probably go straight into anger mm. because the addiction is that I want met is that I want you to love me. And I want my other friend who's coming along to tell me the truth. <laughs> I want him to tell me that you should love me. Yeah. That's yeah. what I want. Yeah. And so I get angry with him for telling him for telling me that you don't have to love me. Yeah. Right? So that, that's an indication that I'm still in my addiction emotion and I'm only crying because my addiction is not met, mm -hmm. which is really an expression of rage. Yes. It's not an expression of sadness at all, mm -hmm. but rather rage. Mm -hmm. And this is where we often are with our emotions. We think we're processing something when it's got nothing to do with God's truth whatsoever. Yeah. And if it's got nothing to do with God's truth, then it's highly likely that we're not processing anything. Yeah. We're just living in our delusion mm. and we're living in our addiction and our addictions are not getting met and all we're doing is expressing our rage about our addictions not getting met. <laughs> okay, so if we recap then mm -hmm. um, what you've said about processing emotions, the original question was, are we going to be feeling a specific emotion? Yeah, and the bl S blunt answer to that was yes. Yes. So, and we're going to be feeling in that we'll be crying or shaking, or we'll be, Shake. it'll be o an overwhelming. Whatever the emotion is. It'll yeah. be an overwhelming experience of emotion. Correct. Yep. Our soul will go through a process of feeling and experiencing the emotion. And uh, that means that there will be outward demonstrations of the experience. Yes. So, you know, when we, when we feel sad, if we're not having tears rolling down our face, yeah. then we're not really feeling sad. Yeah. We're just storing sad. <laughs> we're not feeling living it. Living in sad. We're living in sad. We're yeah. not feeling it. Yeah. To feel an emotion, there will be an expression. There'll be the flow of the energy of that emotion in you. Mm -hmm. And it will, it will exhibit itself in both of your bodies. So if you're a spirit, it'll exhibit in your spirit body. You know, you have tears rolling down your face in your spirit body, or if you're a person on earth, it'll exhibit in your in your physical body. That's the way it will be, mm. and it'll always be that way. Mm -hmm. Always, mm -hmm. that's how God made it to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're overwhelmed yes. bodily, spiritually, emotionally yes. when we're processing. Yes, but the emotion we're processing will be a truth about our life. Mm -hmm. It will not be a false thing about our life. Yep. So, in other words. If I'm processing some emotion where I'm just in my expectation or demand, then that's not a truth about my life. That's, that's a lie about my life. Yeah. And of course, there will be no release. Yeah. And I can cry about those kind of things for the next 10 years and nothing will happen. Yeah. And there are people in, this, in the spirit world who have cried like about those things for a thousand years and nothing's happened. Yeah. Because they haven't processed or they are not finding the emotional truth. Rather, they are relying on the lie and the self-delusion. Yeah, and, and we can just grow the willingness to find the emotional truth within us, of can't course. we? So it's not, it doesn't have to be, uh, this is another thing that you said uh, in, in our discussion, that it's not an intellectual process. Yes. It's, it's a willingness to find the emotional truth. And you said something beautiful, that it would be 
in harmony with love, ethics and God's truth mm. when we're processing emotions. So if we examine this previous example that we had, where I expect you to love me, yeah. and when you don't love me, I have a big cry about it, well, that's telling me that I actually have an expectation or a demand mm -hmm. that you love me. Now, God's truth is, if I just tell myself God's truth, well, God's truth is that you don't have to love me. How do I feel about that? <laughs> yeah. Now, initially, I might feel angry about that, mm -hmm. which is processing a deeper emotion. Mm -hmm. But after I get through my anger and get into what, what I'm afraid of about that, and probably we'll start to go through fears like this emotionally. We'll, the fears will look something like, if Mary doesn't love me, then and nobody has to love me, then I'm going to go through my life unloved. Mm -hmm. how, how do I feel about that? Mm -hmm. And then I'll start connecting to some feelings about my being unloved in my childhood. And in the case, I, it's an interaction with a woman, so it must be some feelings that I have with my mother that I was unloved, mm -hmm. that I need to actually go through. And I'll start processing through that. So I won't be focusing my attention on the current relationship not where it's not working. My attention will be focused on a past experience, usually a childhood one, yeah. that I need to feel about and eventually connect to. Mm -hmm. Then I'll actually be processing, <laughs> <laughs> experiencing the truth of that my emotion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So... Um, so we're going to be feeling it. There's going to be truth involved. And this is the power, isn't it, of exposing ourselves to God's truths because very often it helps us cut through a lot of the self-intellectual delusion stuff we want to tell ourselves about mm. our emotions. If we're willing to humbly face what God's truth is about a matter, often it connects us very well with the errors inside of us, doesn't mm. it? If we're humble. Yes, yeah. if we're humble. The final thing that you said about processing emotions is that we might not know what the exact emotion is while we're feeling it, but we will be overwhelmed emotionally. Yes. Yeah. And, and in the end, um, if you're analysing your emotion, you're not yet at the causal emotion. Yeah. Right. And the fact that we analyse all comes from fears. Yeah. So they all come from higher emotions when yeah. we analyse. Yeah. So every time we analyse our emotions, we're already in the fear-based emotion. Yeah. And we're already living in it. We're living in the addiction of it. Yeah. We're not actually feeling that either. Because yeah. once you start feeling the real emotions, the, you don't need to think about it anymore. You're just focused on the feeling sensations of it. You're not, you're not thinking you know, about it yeah. like anymore. And it is... It, People need to understand it's like there is a gateway into your emotions, into different emotions, mm -hmm. because there is a way that you learned how to suppress them. Yep. And once you undo the way you've learned how to suppress them, you will automatically experience them, mm. uh, all of them. That's great news, isn't it? Yeah. Thank goodness it's not up to me and my intellect to try and root out every little emotion within me no. uh, causally. Like the, the emotion will flow just yeah. like a child yeah. once we allow its flow. Yeah. But we do need to use our will to find mm -hmm. it and find the reason why we deny it. Yeah, find all those things you mentioned and the ways we've controlled it and shut it down, don't yes. we? That's yes, that's the, the work, work you need we to, have do. to do. The actual feeling of the emotion we don't have to worry about very much because when we've released enough blockages to the feeling of an emotion, the emotion will naturally flow just like it does in a child. Yeah. So we don't need to worry about getting to the actual emotion. What we need to concern ourselves about is are we being humble to truth? Yeah. Are we desiring to love here? Mm -hmm. Are we desiring to live in harmony with God's truth and love? Mm -hmm. Are we looking at everything from God's perspective rather than our own? They are the real questions we need to focus on initially yep. because that will help us expose all the blockages. And then we can feel them. Yep. Once we've exposed them, we can then feel them. And once we feel them, the blockages are released. Mm -hmm. And once the blockages are released, and remember all the blockages are feelings, mm -hmm. once they are released, then the causal emotion will naturally flow. Yep. It will always flow. We don't even have to worry about it. It will just come out of us, you know. And so I have plenty of times where I'm just cooking away at something and doing a meal or, and all of a sudden I just start crying and away I go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and often I know what it's about because it, it, the emotion is all about something generally. 
but sometimes I don't even. Yeah. And I just let it go and just let it flow out of me in that moment. So that's all you need to do. Mm -hmm. Once you've released enough blockages, that's what will automatically happen. Yeah. 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 So the key is, the real work we have to do is finding the blockages yes. and being willing to see them, to be truthful and honest about them yeah. and to be humble about them. Yeah. And that's the real work and that's the work that most people don't want to engage. Yeah, God created the great system whereby our soul just feels naturally. Mm -hmm. And it's us who created all these false beliefs and fears and addictions surrounding that natural state, isn't it? Mm. So it, I kind of feel like sometimes God created the perfect process or system or creation in my soul. And then a lot of stuff got built up around it and that's where I live far from it. All I have to do is deconstruct all these man, humankind made uh, beliefs and diversions and addictions mm. that, are, that are in the way of me just living in my soul all mm. the time. That's yeah. correct, yeah. yeah. And so that, that's really what it means to process through emotions. But um, I feel the majority of people don't want to do any of that. And that's yeah. why they keep asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they don't want to well, be truthful and honest about, you know, be humble, look at everything from God's perspective. You know, we have, we have in the course of a day, we, as you know, we have many conversations with people, all whom get upset with us generally about every conversation. Mm -hmm. Mostly it's because they're completely in their addiction and when we tell them they are, they get angry. Mm -hmm. And later on they might see it, but they initially always generally get angry. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you've really got to ask the question, do they really want to know what's going on inside of them emotionally? And I'd have to answer, no, they don't. Mm. Because when, when they have somebody tell them what's going on inside of the emotion, they completely deny it, yeah. completely. So if they're denying it with somebody telling them, they're definitely going to be denying it with God because God's trying to give them a feeling about it. And, and if, if someone's right in your face telling you what the problem is and you deny it, then you're not going to be ever connect to God who, you know, who's, you know, give it, trying to give you a feeling about it. Yeah. So of course you, you're not going to process through your real causal emotions doing that. Mm -hmm. So there are many people we feel who have listened now for five, six years or whatever. And the reality is they haven't begun this process yet. They've only heard a whole heap of divine truth, none of which has entered their heart yet because it can't enter their heart while there's so much fear and addiction in their heart. And there's a complete unwillingness for them to get real about their true emotional self and what, their, what demands are coming out of their soul and what expectations they have and how much rage and anger they have and so forth. Mm. And until you get through those barriers, you won't be processing emotion. Yeah. You'll only be feeling emotions of self-deception. Mm. Good topic for another question. <laughs> so let's <Yes>. move on. <laughs>